right, Ron, whenever you're ready. Okay. The Improviser by David Gegia. Interior Production Company Office Evening. A small office all in glass overlooking the city. A man at 48 with an evil face walks in, nervously fiddling with some round object in his jacket pocket. I heard you're looking for a short one location, few, few characters. Producer one in his mid 20s nodes, glances at his watch, and yawns. Producer two, also in his mid 20s, looks up from his phone and motions at the man to sit down across the table. The man goes and sits down, eyes on envelope. Lying in the middle of the table, $1,000 for the best short is written on it. So yeah. what's the movie? Uh, it's about a man selling his script to a production company. Producer two, scrolling through his phone, blurts out. Movies about movies suck. Actually, it's not about making a movie. Let him start, okay? It's getting late. Producer one glances at his watch again. The man leans back and starts with his deep and intimidating voice. It all happens in an office, a nice glass office like this one. He looks around, producer two smirks. The man notices, continues. It's like two young producers. I would call them producer one and producer two. Had a hell of a day. They heard about a dozen different pitches and getting nothing exciting. That's when. Insert. Interior production company office day. The man enters the office. Producer one glances at his watch and yawns. Producer two scrolls through his phone. A man nervously fiddling with some round objects in his jacket pocket enters the office. Producer two lifts his head briefly and motions the man to sit across the table. Producer one notices. The man rolls a round object in his jacket pocket as he goes to sit at the table. So what's your movie? The man clears his so, throat. What's your movie? <laughs> Go ahead, Janice. You can say. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so what's your movie about, sir? Man clears his throat in. It's about a man who sells his screenplay to two producers. Wait, wait. Man grimaces, displeased at the interruption. Interior, office, night, back to scene. Producer one shifts in his seat. Who is this man? We don't know yet. Maybe he's a talent writer who heard you we're looking to buy short, or maybe he's a crazy person with a hand grenade planning to blow up the office. We don't know yet. Okay, why would he want to blow up the office? Can we know that? Maybe he hates the producers. Maybe he sent them his script and a couple of years ago, they stole his idea. Producer one shoots a quick nervous look at the producer two. Uh, something similar happened in Japan and an angry writer burned down a studio containing 33 people inside. So he has a grenade in his pocket. Maybe, maybe not. We don't know. Yeah. All we know is he hates being interrupted. Producer two smirks. Producer one shifts in his seat again. Right. What comes next? The man begins speaking slowly with his deep, intimidating voice. Insert. Interior office day movie. The man speaks slowly. Producer one listens attentively. There's, there isn't much happening in, in the opening scene, but the man already sees the thick tension between the two producers. I, I don't see. Oh, uh, Pippi, stop, stop, stop. Cut to interior office, night, back to scene. Producer two squints. So the story is about two producers. Not really. I mean, we don't know this yet. 
Do we know what they look like, the producers? We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, they look like you, young in suits and um, one one matter than uh, the uh, one smarter than the other. Two producers glance at each other. Is the movie in the movie, of course. Producer two puts his phone away, crosses his arms, and listens. I know it's a clean cliche, kind of a good cop, bad cop, but people love that stuff. It's always works. A few cliches are okay. Producer one smiles at the man. Producer two rolls his eyes at his partner's cheap attempt to please the man. He leans forward in. I think I know how this movie ends. The smart producer calls bullshit and kicks the guy out of the office. In the movie, of course. Am I right? Not exactly. Producer two uh, proposes to kick the man out, but producer one asks him to wait. He gazes at the producer two with a piercing look. Producer one knows the man may have a grenade in his pocket. Insert, interior office day movie. Producer one leans to producer two and. Let him finish, okay. Producer two waves him off like whatever. The man continues his story in a dramatic voice. In the second act, producer two reveals his true nature. He becomes uh, a gated uh, and we learn that he hate his partner. Why does he hate him? Jealousy. Maybe his partner owns more shares in the company. Maybe he has a better looking girlfriend or a bigger dick. We don't know yet. Producer one chuckles. Producer two glares at him, then reaches a pen and starts fiddling with it. Okay, what happens next? Then the man gets really angry. What, why? Because the producer keep getting interrupting him. Bang. Cut to interior office, night back to scene. Producer one slams his hand on the table. I know how this ends. I'm not sure you do. May I finish it? Producer one grins. Producer two smirks. The man continues. Things get more complicated towards the middle. Insert, interior office, dusk, movie. The light turns on in the office as it gets darker outside. The man has both producers full attention as he talks. You know how the midpoint is important, right? Producer one nods, producer two rolls his eyes. So towards the middle point, the two producers start to identify themselves with the characters from the movie, despite the man's warning that all the characters or in, invented in all similarities or accidental. Producer two feels insulted. The man wants to portray him as an idiot and his partner, it looks like he's okay with it. Even worse, he seems to enjoy it. Producer two glances at producer one. Producer one smile drops. There's a bad feeling in the air and we begin to sense it, act, Three, something horrible will happen in the office, but what will happen exactly? We don't. I know yet. This is bullshit. Bullshit. Don't tell me you like this. First act, midpoint, act three. What's the main plot? We don't know yet. I just want to know what the man has in his pocket. Obviously, whatever it is, it's not a bomb. This building has security. Agent Joe, also known as Sleeping Beauty Joe, come on. Plus, it's a movie. Anything can happen in a movie. May I finish, please? No, you can't. Cut to interior office night back to scene. Producer two, pissed off, throws his pen away. It's crap. We won't buy it. Your pitch is over. You don't, you don't want to hear the end? I don't care how it ends. Fucking producers. There's a twist in the end. What did you say? I said it has a twist ending. 
The man slides his hand into his jacket pocket, fiddles with the mysterious round item with his stone cold face. Producer one whispers to producer two. He has a grenade. The man has a grenade. Is that the twist? This is not a twist. It's bullshit. He has no grenade. He doesn't even have a screenplay. That's exactly what producer two says in the movie. He says, you don't even have a screenplay. You're inventing this shit on the go. Man pauses dramatically, then regret regretfully. And in order to calm producer two down, the man reveals the twist. Turns out producer two was the smarter one all alone in the movie, of course. Producer one stops smiling. So he says that just to calm. No, no, not really. Producer two was right. The man had no grenade and was inventing everything as he went. A long beat. Hmm. Not the greatest twist ever, but sounds interesting. It got a tad confusing for me. Is it a comedy? Comedies aren't big in sales nowadays. Some may find it funny how producer one changes his mind after the twist, but not a comedy. May I continue? Insert interior office night movie. Producer one notices it's night outside. He checks his watch. Okay, there's some potential, but it's confusing. And this twist, it it isn't good enough. We need some wow factor. There's no wow. I thought you loved the story. I did. I did because it had potential. I thought the guy had a grenade. I thought it was a thriller or a suspense. That's what sells nowadays. Who's going to watch a movie about two producers competing against who's smarter? Well, you, you just changed your mind because your character. What the hell's wrong with you? The producers freeze. I've been pitching a 10 minute long short for 20 minutes now. Could you just shut up and let me finish my goddamn story? I know how it should end. Men glares at him. It slipped out. I didn't mean to interrupt. Now you're playing the nice guy. Wait a minute. The producers look at the man. The man raises his eyebrows. I know how it should end. This dialogue, the dialogue belongs to producer one. Producer one, producer two. I told you it's confusing. You can't confuse your audience. It's not confusing. You just don't like that producer two turned out. Why do you think you're producer two? What? It's obvious. He said it from the beginning. He never said. The man stares at the producers fiercely arguing with each other, glancing from one to another. He only sees their lips spitting out arguments swiftly. Their dialogue starts to sound like an audio recording, speeding up more and more, getting louder and louder to the point when the man pushes away from the table and jumps to his feet, yelling, Fucking idiots! The producer frees to their chairs. This movie isn't about you. This movie is about me. He retrieves the grenade from his pocket and pulls the pin with his teeth muttering. Stupid producers, never listen. Always interrupting. Why this is why that. He's got. Run! And they bolt towards the exit. The man with a malicious smile throws his grenade, shouting, Motherfucker! Then the screen fades to black and white. Letters appear in the center. The end. Cut to interior office night, back to scene. The two producers stare at the man. Looks like you didn't see it coming. Is that the wow factor you were looking for? Yes, but you lied to us. You said he didn't have a grenade. Are you calling me a liar? He rises, pushing the table away, clutches his jacket pocket. No, no. No. 
good because I'm not alive. I'm a storyteller and unbelievable narrator, but not alive. May I? He reaches for the envelope. I'll send you the script tomorrow. He puts the envelope in his pocket and goes to the door. Can we know the title? Uh, something idiots. The two producers glance at each other. The man gets his stress ball from his jacket pocket and squeezing it leaves the office. You just paid a thousand bucks for whatever that was. Me? You said you liked it. I wanted to kick his ass out of here, remember? All I remember is I didn't mean to interrupt. And they continue arguing as they watch the man walking down the hallway, smiling. Title card, <laughs> the improviser, fade out, the end. Cool, cool. That was an interesting little piece. Uh, you know, let's uh, talk about it. This could... What are you guys' thoughts? Do we know anything about the writer? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of get why you said that, though. But no, just sent me the script. Lately, I've been noticing making... a lot of people. Lately, I've been noticing a lot of people are writing scripts about writing scripts and making movies, like making scenes. I, I keep seeing that everywhere I'm going now. Yeah, it seems like a thing, uh, like a, how do you, I guess, in the moment kind of idea, like submitting scripts or producing or, I think it's you like know, the or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this one uh, reminds me of a room script. I don't know, um, you, Jordan, yeah. Ron, you guys remember his script, but the three producers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the one I was thinking of. I, yeah. I think we've read, I've read that one twice. Like the first time he had us read it, the second time. And then I saw the film version that he did of it. Yeah, he had the first episode and then yeah. it was supposed to be a one-off, but then um, yeah. they decided to put more episodes to it. So yeah, then we read it again. And then I gave a link that last time to um, the Japanese actor from, uh, what's the TV show? The Bruce Lee one, uh, I forget what it's called. Uh, but he did something similar to that kind of concept. Mm-hmm. With the producer? Yeah, yeah, like, uh, well, in this case, he's, he's Asian. So he was like applying, he, he knows martial arts in real life. He's very good and skillful, but he plays an Asian and they try and typecast and then he, he doesn't know any martial arts in it and stuff like that. But it's a similar, kind of a similar concept. Okay. Ladies, you guys wanna share your thoughts about the script? It was cute. I think it's kind, of like <laughs> it <was> <laughs> kind of like uh i was kind of confused on if like it was supposed to be like realistic or not i guess okay yeah yeah i mean i i get where the, i think i believe i know where the comedy is coming from it's like you know like ryan said he's in the moment but he's actually talking about the script so it's kind of a I don't know if you call that a twofold, but um, yeah. 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 I think it's just like, like the interaction between the producers and stuff. Um. Mm-hmm. That's all I, I guess that's about it. Yeah, it's pretty short. Um, yeah. I can see how you can get confused too, because it's you know, can basically the same thing in the moment. So, but I see, but the idea was trying to be funny at the same time, but yeah, it can also be, I think it can be confusing too. Um, so yeah, that just to know for the writer, if you want to take another look at that, just make sure, you know, like even setting the script, make sure the audience don't get confused. Um, so <laughs> the irony of that, um, yeah, cool, cool. Anything else? About it. What was the he problem? Confused. I'm sorry. 
What was the problem? You have a problem with an account? Mm, not sure what you mean. Jordan was saying she has a problem with an account or something. Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the recording off and then. <laughs> oh. oh, oh. <laughs> I was, yeah. I mean, hit that guy. <laughs>